many offspring you have who survive and then reproduce. That's it. It's kind of depressing. So, um, and we evolved also to, to promote reproductive success under really challenging energy limiting conditions. And so this helps us think about now to answer those, these questions. So the first question really is, you know, why is exercise so important for health? Well, the first reason is that because of our evolutionary history, we evolved really important adaptations to be endurance athletes. So this is, this is one of my passionate sort of topics. And this, this is a long and complicated story, but I'm gonna simplify it ridiculously to just a few slides. But um, we can start the story around six million years ago when we uh, diverged from our ape ancestors and we're more closely related to chimps than to gorillas. And there's a lot of evidence, there's a lot of debates about just the nature of that last common, ans last common ancestor, but I won't go to my grave, uh, believing that that last common ancestor was probably pretty chimp-like. It was a forest-dwelling ape, primarily ape fruit, it was probably a knuckle walker, um, and it was, um, and like other apes, it was good at speed and power and had almost no endurance. Right? If you ever want to wrestle a chimpanzee, you don't. But if you want to race a chimpanzee over a long distance, you'll be fine. Um, chimpanzees are strong and powerful, but they have almost no endurance. And the important thing is that we, that the, from the very get-go, the oldest fossils we have that are more closely related to us than chimpanzees are bipeds. And that transition followed a period of major climate change. And we know that Africa was cooling down. And when it cooled, we went from a more woodland habitat to more, excuse me, a more forest habitat to a more woodland habitat. Opening up in the environment, and what, what do chimpanzees and other apes like? They love fruit, right? They have to travel very short distances. So a typical chimpanzee walks two kilometers, maybe three kilometers a day to get all the fruit it needs. It spends half its day eating fruit. But, um, but as you live in a more open woodland environment, you have to travel farther in order to get the same amount of fruit. We know these creatures were still, well, were still fruit eaters. And so these first hominids appear to be bipeds, and we have pretty good data. So my team did some of this work. We actually got chimpanzees that were uh, retired from Hollywood, had actually been previously abused chimpanzees, and we actually can, uh, convinced the chimpanzees, asked them really, to wear oxygen masks, so this was no coercion here, and measured their oxygen consumption. And we can show that chimpanzees spend four times as much energy to use it to move a unit body mass as a, um, a kilometer then, or a meter than, than a human being. So one of the big advantages of being a biped is that as, as those environments open, that you have to travel farther to get your food, being bipeds enable us to do that much more efficiently. That's a huge amount of energy. It's obviously a big selective benefit. And there's also some evidence that, um, and arguments that being bipedal also helped uh, hominins or early ancestors uh, feed more efficiently. Okay, fast forward a few million years. Again, I'm whizzing over a lot of complicated data. Um, more environmental changes occurring. This is again that graph before. This is time um, on the x-axis. This is temperature of the Earth's planet, um, down to Earth's uh, environment. And, and during this period between starting around 2.8 million years ago, we know the Earth started cooling again rather dramatically. This had major effects in Africa. Again, causing more drying out of Africa. In particular, we have the opening up of all of these grassland habitats. And if you're standing out there two million years ago or two and a half million years ago wondering what to eat for dinner and you have, a, you have ape ancestry and you're, you're trying to look in this landscape what to eat, what's the obvious thing to eat in this landscape? It's the zebra. <coughs> so what happened was, and we know this pretty well from the evolutionary record, is there were two responses to these ships. One was a group of hominins, which thankfully are not our ancestors and they went extinct. They're called the robustus gramopithecines and these are like cows on legs. They basically became adapted for eating really low quality diets. And uh, they lasted around 1.2 million years ago. They're gone, you don't have to worry about them. They're not your ancestors, they're cousins. Our ancestors are the genus Homo, and we started going for the good stuff. Right? We became high quality food specialists. Um, and, they, and we first started figuring around 2.8 million years ago. And really what this is about is the invention of a novel way of life called hunting and gathering, right? Which is not just, not just hunting and gathering, although that's very important, that gathering tends to be extractive foraging. So instead of just you know, picking berries off plants, you're actually often digging for stuff. You're getting honey, you're getting resources that are high energy but not necessarily easy to get. But it also involves lots of cooperation. You can't make the system work unless you have food sharing and, and pair bonding. And also you require tool making and food processing. And you can't make the system work without that. And we actually just published a paper uh, on just how important tools are for chewing, for example, in, in, in nature just a few months ago. 